You are watching Getting Tabled. Hello and welcome back to the Hobby Bunch, future people. Um, episode 18 of the podcast um, and another video I talked about God Terror and talked about how my girlfriend did enjoy playing it. The one thing she did not like about it, and I did mention this in the podcast, was she did not like the way the dice felt to rolling the dice. So, what do you do when you have that issue? You get yourself a dice tower. Uh, I picked this one up off of Amazon. It is by a company called Broken Token. And this is a great start to video, not being able to un package MDF. Um, this is uh, some fairly heavy duty plastic they've got on here. Um, also that is a very crappy exacto blade so um, yeah very very well done uh, laser cutting very precise um, and then a little set of instructions. Now this is a fairly simple and straightforward. Um, I did watch a video of them putting their stuff together and they showed actually using a hammer putting some of the stuff together because it apparently fits so well. So we're going to see how well it fits together. And did get some new blades. I should probably break those out. That should work better for trimming out MDF. Now, of course, you can't leave this unpainted, so I do have a paint scheme of mine, and I will share it with you as soon as we get into the second little bit of this. Um, this handle is not being very cooperative, but I did get it off Wish for a ridiculously cheap price, so can't complain about uh how much I spent. Let's see if it's uh, at least somewhat sharp. And it's sharp enough. Uh, Broken Token, I'd never heard of them until the other day when I was looking for this dice tower. Uh, they do have a normal web store, uh, they do have Amazon. Uh, so you can do the, the one-click uh, purchasing. They do have prime shipping. Now, that being said, if you go to their website, the prices are cheaper. I didn't see how much they charge for shipping. If you do it for Amazon, it is a couple dollars more. But you're already using your Amazon account. There's no extra fuss of entering you know, email address, creating an account, blah, blah, blah. And, oh, you get prime shipping when you do it that way, too. So, let's see how well these fit together. Um, that is, that's pretty snug, actually. Uh, you could do a pretty decent job of dry fitting this together at, without having to use any glue. Let's see here how well this also pops in. That is a really, really snug and tight fit. I can see why they were showing using an actual hammer to assemble this. Um, I don't have a hammer here handy, but I've got something else. Allow me to apply some pressure, break that out, and see if I can't apply some pressure. As you can hear, that is a uh, that is MDF creaking together because it is a very very snug fit. As I manhandle this together, and I'm not joking about that at all. Um, that's without any glue, and it's it fits. 
So we'll get this last little bit on here and we'll move on to the, the next part of this dice tower. If I can squeeze everything together. And there we go, there's the tray. So the rest of these pieces here, uh, form a little box, sits right here, provides an exit for the dice. Won't touch that just just yet because that box attaches to this. And we'll use the sharper blade here. Probably go through the plastic a lot better. This is the actual top half of the tower. So uh, broken token, the way they do it is you can get... Uh, there's one of two uh, bases, which just partially assembled. And then there's multiple tops. Uh, and that's part of what I wanted was something that looks, you know, sort of cool. You know, you can get any sort of dice roller that, you know, it's got three things for the dice to bounce off, comes out, and you get your, your results. I want something that looked a little more aesthetically awesome. And... That's what it look, that's what it's gonna look like. So as you can see, there is the tray that just started assembling, and there's the little box, and this attaches to that box. So my plan is, well, it's a skeleton. So the outside of everything is going to be, I'm gonna do gray. The skeleton stuff, well, skeleton stuff's gonna be white, and what I will do is I will try to leave uh, all these skeleton bits in the MDF, paint both sides of it white. That way when I peel it off, out, I have a dark edge around it to you know give it some depth and whatnot. Do it simple, simple and easy, you know, and kind of cheat a little bit. Then the inside, I'm gonna do Vanta black, the, the blackest of blacks to give it more of a void and depth appearance with the uh, with, with, with the, the skeleton in there to you know make it look more floaty so um, as you can kind of see here you know you got the little vertebrae and go to those yeah there we go so Diesel goes down through the rib cage bounces off of those and and whatnot, and it tumbles out, and there you go. So, um, that being all parts equal, it looks like I can do some pre assembly and get rolling this pretty good, and then just worry about doing the, the interior. So, uh, I'm not gonna bore you with that, but we will do a, a painting adventure of making this look cool. So, uh, till next time play more games hello future people and welcome back to the hobby bench today I am going to work on painting my dice tower and to do this it's just gonna be super simple I'm gonna do the outside gray the inside black and the skeleton part obviously white I'm gonna do this all with just airbrush primer and call it good so uh, I'm not gonna make you watch paint dry we'll do some stop and starts but let's get going take a little break in the video here um, probably won't notice too much but we're gonna let this dry and do another coat of gray and hopefully have some nice good coverage and then we'll move on to doing the white all right let's put on coat number two
For that to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and do the skeleton white parts um, somehow. <laughs> I did not, I did not think about the uh, issues with the gray primer and and everything not being dry. So let's see. But I'm going to go ahead and get this patch out somehow. I'm going to think a minute or two while I uh, shake this paint up. And yeah, I'm sure something will come to me. See how this works using a couple couple chunks of the uh, I guess flashing best way to put it the the excess wood to uh, set the pieces up on. And of course, my compressor turns on while I'm talking, but uh, we'll throw some of those uh, on there to work set up so it's not sitting directly on the fresh gray. And well, probably just have to do that for the when I flip it over, do the the black sides too, so that you know I'm not introducing you know colors where I don't want colors. So. See how this works. took long enough. I am less than impressed with my white primer. I did not know it was going to be nearly that bad or grainy. Let me grab this piece over here. I don't know if you can see. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't seem to be as, as uh, good a coverage as I would like. Now, what I do have, and I just looked and saw it, make sure to cover the label up here properly because of stuff in the past, but I have some white fluorescent um, airbrush paint. So what I'll probably do is just get a good coat of uh, white primer down and then hit it with that to get the, the white coverage I'm looking for, hopefully. Um, and between the, that fluorescent uh, coverage, I'm not going to have it anywhere near a black light, but, you know, it's white paint. It's airbrush paint. You know, I don't want to spend too much time on this. I'm already going to be doing some brush work. Uh, I think it'll give me the, a good enough white contrast with what I'm going to do for the, the black inside of the dice tower. So uh, let this uh, dry a little more. Flip the pieces over. Do a, do a second coat of white. And by then, hopefully the gray will be dry enough that I can flip that over and then start doing the uh, the base coat of uh, black. And then hopefully by then uh, we start doing some uh, assembly and getting this uh, dice tower finished up and uh, ready for use. So uh, remembered I had these little clips to hold stuff. How often I airbrush? I forget I have, I've have gotten stuff for, for airbrushing specifically. So we're going to go through and try to finish up doing the white. Uh, this piece right here, I only need to do like this section. And the rest of it's going to be kind of black because it, it, it's hard to show. 
only, this is the only part of the skeleton. The rest of it is just, you know, a border. So we'll somehow make that black or gray or whatever color it actually needs to be. So see if we can get going on this and, you know, give the white plenty of time to dry before applying more coats and keep moving forward. Because, like I said, it's just a little dice tower. I want it to look decent, but I don't want to spend too much time on it. So more coats of paint. So, it's a little bit better, um, a little bit faster. Um, I am probably just going to let the, the white dry and then throw down the layer of fluorescent white and uh, move it off uh, elsewhere so I don't get any sort of contamination of the, of the black and just let everything completely dry a lot more than, than what it is right now so that, you know, I'm not touching up and redoing because of because of a uh, overspray underspray stuff like that so uh, and we'll continue this on alrighty so we've gone through and have shaken our paint let the white dry so now we're gonna actually paint the white not use primer but actually use a white paint and keep moving forward on this. So once we get this done, then we'll move on to the black. And once we're done with the black, there's another black. And this black is really cool. Uh, but let's get going. Didn't go as planned. I'm really not happy with this white primer uh, from Badger. Uh, I yeah, I think it is. It is Badger. One second here. Camera turned off. Well, my view of the camera turned off. Um, the, I think that's the Badger line of uh, airbrush primer. Uh, not thoroughly happy with the white. It seems to be very thin and runny. Um, versus, if you look at this gray, this gray has done a really good job of covering. Um, I don't know if or what, if there's anything I can do to improve it, other than, I don't know, let dry out, which, you know, that would make it even worse to spray. Um, yeah. I'll have to find something else and for the time being, I'll have to find something else to do for uh, for the white. Uh, next part, we'll be doing the black. Alrighty, I'm gonna start moving on to doing the black parts and see if we can really really make this look nifty, nifty. And away we go. <laughs>
Alrighty, that's the first coat of black, which, you know, it's black, so it's going on pretty easy and uh, quick. Um, yeah, getting closer to the last stage is of putting this together and painting it. Uh, probably going to wind up uh, using some of this right here on the, the bone. Yeah, scale 75 Mojave White. Uh, I'll just give it a better bone color as it is, so instead of just white white um be fine i'm just hoping to just airbrush everything and do as little little brush work as possible but yeah seems unavoidable at this point so uh next stage will be another layer of black and then we start doing all the brush work Alrighty, we're gonna do the uh last coat of black here and then try to figure out what we're gonna do with the bones and finish up. So, last coat of black is done, and just going to have to let it dry. Uh, next part is going to be really cool because, well, it's neat. I've been excited to try some of this stuff. Uh, I'll go ahead and show you right now. And I did not want to do that. Alrighty. This stuff. Some of the, the Vanta 3.0 black. Um purpose I want to use it is because, well, it's black. It's it's going to give it a little effect of being darker and deeper on the inside of the, uh, the dice chamber. So, yeah. Hopefully it turns out the way I want. And we'll, you'll just have to wait a couple seconds to see. Alrighty. Uh, we're going to start doing some assembly. At these parts right here this is the bottom where the dice come out so we are going to of course be painting that but well this piece because you know I want that to have some of that dark black the Vanta so if you look here at the in my little paint dealy there that is some residue versus uh, I can't remember what that black was from but and then if we look in here at the bottom of the I don't know if you can see the the water how it's separated and all that pigment down in the bottom so now when I when I did use this earlier to kind of do uh, some testing with it I just grabbed a piece of wood and threw a couple coats on. And you can see, uh, I don't know if you can see too much difference. Try to look here. Yeah, it does look a little, I mean, obviously it looks black, so. That's a, and then, but here's a, you know, a little, little space for me to do. Yeah, it's really hard to see on the, you look really close, you can still see the outline of the, the marine. So, like I said, hopefully if this this does what I want it to do, what, what I want it to do for an effect of, you know, being just super black. Which, I mean, obviously it will because it is super black, so.
well, I have to do another coat of the black. Um, more coats, better the coverage, better the coverage, the better the color. So, yeah. Um, a slow, tedious process. And that's apparently stuck in the paint. Lovely. Let's see if I can scrape that off real quick. Alrighty. Well, now, now we'll let everything dry. And we'll get back to more of the, the brush painting for assembly. Alrighty. So, now we're going to paint the skeleton skull stuff. And get that ready to get put together and start final assembly um, after doing another coat of black. Um, now that it's had a chance to dry, you see the difference between the two blacks. This is the black primer, and this is the the Vanta black. So, really, really super dark, rich black. Um, yeah, so, uh, now if this is mixed up, we're going to use some Mojave White. Focus. Well, Hobby White uh, from Scale 75. Uh, that's what we're going to paint the bone in. And yeah. So enjoy this little uh, time lapse. <laughs> Alrighty. I know it's not the prettiest of painting, but it's just it's just wood. No, it's, <clears throat> it's just supposed to have a coat of paint on it. Really, I, I do paint much better than that when I'm trying to. Um, I think I'm, we're done now with uh, coats of paint. And the next step, once all the paint is dry, is final assembly and, and hope that this... Uh, Dice Tower looks good. And yeah. On to the next one. 
Alrighty, starting assembly, and I forgot to uh, turn the camera on, so uh, I got the side pieces in. Now, as I said earlier, some of these parts do fit really snug, and what happens when you throw a bunch of paint on, it gets thicker, so I'm having to go through, do some cleanup and stuff, so this is going to take a little longer than I was planning on, but... That's all right. And, uh, we'll just get this done. Alrighty, um, I think I'm going to call that for the video, may do a little, uh, what is it, B-reel they call it or whatever, to uh, show it fully assembled, uh, need to do a little, a little more gluing there, but uh, I like the, uh, the look, I need to blow out some of the, the schmutz too, um, yeah, Broken Token, um, not a sponsor, uh, Dice Tower, post some links, and you enjoy the rest of your day.